I thought I'd show you this as well. This is something I found. This is a very cheap, nasty co-op bag. Right? The kind of thing that uh, is super thin and not uh, not a thicker bag. You need a thinner bag. Right? So what am I doing? Basically, I'm putting some paint on this. And so if I put it on there, you actually can get these gorgeous marks right and if you move them like this it can look quite like grass which is quite nice right uh, this i thought you might like So it makes fantastic, and then once again you make the odd bits into it, or maybe put a bit of extra dark into certain things, put stuff out of it, maybe that come into here. But yeah. Cheap bags. <laughs> Quite nice. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, uh, right away. The only trouble is you get <laughs> so I've done a little bit of something when you were um, having coffee there. I've put some paint on. I've put some colour in. A little bit of a blue, a bit of brown, uh, and I've taken some little bits out with kind of a bit of kitchen rolls, in, just so it looks very, It looks a bit broken up, and it's not too boring. Right. Um, what I wanted to do with that is I'll do a bit of negative painting. Uh, on this side, I'm going to, because we don't have, don't have long left, I thought I would show you kind of something of the principles of what we've been doing with some of the other stuff, but in context of, say, thinking of a tree in the round. I'm probably just going to do it one colour, because it will be all variations on colour. So what I could do, for example, you might test how far the stuff will move. Right, so it's not that hot in here. So what I could do is I could do some broken marks. And let that just be fuzzy and we could have some ground. Right, and we'll just leave that a bit. Right. This, what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to go negative with this. So let me paint that. What I'm going to do is do a block. Right, so if I just do a block, and then I do a block, right, and then I do say a block, do you see how I'm beginning, when I'm not trying to paint the dark bit, I'm trying to paint the light bit, right, so now if I put a bit of a triangular bit at the top of that, and maybe a triangle or a bit, or I'll go higher with that, <coughs> and then make that go kind of pointy, right, and I'm going to here, I'm going to go wider, Right. But I want this to look, it's going to come down there and I'm going to break the bottom of that shape just a bit. And this I'm going to break it a bit more. And I might bend that and do that like that. What I'm looking for is trying to paint something that's a bit more like a moonlit scene. So now I'm going to come up and I'm going to cut into that and make that there more like a triangle aiming this way. Right. And this, I might make a triangle aiming this way. And I might narrow that down a touch. Right, and this one, I'm going to make a triangle. Oh, in fact, I'll make two triangles. Right, right, triangle aiming this way. And here, I'll try triangle aiming towards myself. Maybe I'll do another one of them. Coming down, do you see what I'm... May or may not say it. 
<laughs> so to make it, let's make sense of this, I'm going to go to the top of the tree. Now it's night time. All right, so this is some kind of branch thing there. Uh, and I'm going to go more into that there, more down into that. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to paint the spaces that go between the branches. All right. So let's say I thought, well, like this could, I could split that into two. And curve, split that. Split that. So the, the trick usually is that you paint, I, I would, if you're trying to do something like this, I wouldn't do the top. Because right? the top bit is the hard bit. Yeah. You make this disappear into nothing and you just do that. Now I'm going to let that dry for a bit. In fact, we're going to, you've got the idea of that. I'm going to fill that one. Get rid of that. I'll do something else with that in a minute. Right, we're back to this. So now what I want to do is, this is sort of dampish, so why don't I now try doing some of those sorts of, well I could print onto it because it's slightly wet and wet, it's sort of fuzzy. So um, the first lot of marks, because they're wet and wet, are now falling back. Let's do that. Take the excess off the brush of paint, and I could do a whole load of soft kind of grassy things here. Right. And I could maybe hint at something coming upwards. There, so let's go back. What do we do? We're going out of focus, all right? Or we're doing those marks. So there, the other ones, if I want to make slightly varied, then I might think what well, I can do some maybe slightly dragged about marks into this. Now with this methodology, you have to wait <laughs> a bit because it needs to dry off. So hopefully, well, let's do it as, as another, while we're waiting for that bit to dry, so if I wanted to create another thing, what I could do is make something that comes in front. Right? As if there are grasses in front of this. Yeah? Like they're in front. But I could also do ones which are part way into there. But if I if I wanted to make it look more further back, I could do some of it so that I'm now choosing to use they're a more solid shape. So to make the grasses behind this go a bit um, falling back over visually, what do I do? I don't go solid shapes, I go broken shapes so that they sit behind. If I wanted to do something on these trees that look like they were further away, then I might do slightly more broken shapes. Yeah? How are we doing? Now, all I have to do and it would be better if I had a hairdryer, which I haven't brought, but it doesn't matter. Right. Is now I want to add a new tree. <coughs> so I'm going back here, let's <coughs> take the weight off that. And I put, I do that, and then I think, so what do I need to do? I need to make the tree shape, butt up against that one, but make the land slightly higher and behind. So instead of being the same level, and then I move back, and what do I do? paint the triangle that looks towards me and I might do something in there and up here I might make that line continue behind that and continue that line going that way All right. and if I was going here I might do the same thing coming like that so what we're doing we're deciding where the level of the land is All right. and then we can make some slightly more bendy looking tree so now more witchy kind of tree there and then we can make sure that the land is at that level so now that bit looks like it's behind the white bit right? and then you miss a bit and you go up and then you miss a bit and you go up now most people don't do it like this they do it like this Whoa. 
it goes up there like that, and then I'm going to go there. They draw it, basically. Right? And then they fill it in. But it can look so cool. That kind of negative painting of branches and trees and things. Because if you don't do it um, too dark, it means I can paint another lot there. And I can paint it behind again and again and again. So you can paint woods doing this behind and behind. And if you never explain the top bit, you can make your woods drop back over and over again. Right. Come back to that. So that's now drying off a bit. So as it's dried, now if I made some more marks on here, do you see how they, if even I'd been to take the tone down, notice how dry this is. So now we've got a dry brush. I'll do that if I wanted, or I could make some more pushy marks. That kind of thing. So the first lot's fallen back, and into this, I could do some printing kind of marks on there. Let's come back up now with a. So as we come through there, dragging the brush behind me, through out the other side, into this, miss bits, paint a bit, miss a bit. Don't paint it all. soft look of a tree. Now this look at the moment looks terrific. You think it's going to be harder those? Remember that blotting off I was doing with this, the sea and whatever? If I wanted I could make just bits. Do you see how I've done a start, stop and start? So I could also then go back because <coughs> I've done a stop and start thing. Well I actually want you to look there as well. So I could do bits that go between. Now if I want the viewer to look at this more. What do I do? Well, I need to add some lines. So let's now add some lines which will be slightly more further forward than the other marks were. All right. What else did we add? We added these little curved marks. Let's go back. If I can find the brush. Hmm. Well, there it is. So now I could do those little curved marks, those kind of thing. There we are, got them. Tap, 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 which are going to be slightly more in focus than the other marks were. I could go them one way, I could do them upside down. This, these often look like little duck's feet as well. They can be quite nice. I don't think they're a bit heavy, I could soften them down. I could even try using some that printing thing we did earlier, I could think, well, actually, I'm going to see if I can do some just sort of print on an angle. So you see what I'm offering is different levels of focus in the marks. So some of the marks are way, way back and others further forward. What's the next thing I need? I need seeds, but I also need more work on the lines. So let's go back. And we could have a little bit more work on these. So some of that. If I've already painted some bits and they've dried off, then instead of repainting them, paint some new ones and sometimes make them overlap the last ones, which makes them drop back. All right. So then we go up, paint bits, miss bits. There's also a, th a thing where, do you notice how I let things just float about? That makes it look like the wind's moving it. If you explain everything, it looks utterly still. So some of it you kind of, you might lead up and explain with the marks that you're doing. And the trouble with, once you get into this kind of thing, you feel like you spent half your life painting branches, but that goes with the territory. Let's go to seeds. 
Next. Next thing to draw your attention would be seed work. So what I would do, I'm going to do those so that they are going to be slightly in fans, maybe. Little fanning out marks. Now I'm not going to make a wonderful tree here because I'm basically showing you about ten different methods shoved on top of one another. But hopefully you'll get the idea. Maybe the old squiggle mark. Now hopefully you'll see that those these ones are now more attention seeking. And if I darken bits of this, wait to get up a bit more. Back to the grasses. If you're ever trying to get this thing sorted, don't paint a tree. Paint the grass, because the grass is easier than the trees. <laughs> <laughs> so then if I, for example, do some little, well, let's go back to, we had our arcing marks. Anything, so we could try some of those. What are they like? Looks like different forms of grasses. We could try some printed marks. We can now try some seed marks, the occasional seed mark. And what about seed marks that are stacked? Right, or seed marks that roll? Back to this. So if I then think, well, I think that's dry enough there, I could now paint another tree, also inside there, so I can make this bit higher, make the land a bit higher there. In fact, we'll have two trees, we'll have one there, and then one there. You don't even have to be that sophisticated now these trees are, they just have to appear like almost stalky stump things that then kind of flay out a bit higher up. You don't have to do much, actually on that level of it to make it start to fall back in um, yeah and then you basically would you know work out which bits of this you wanted to tune or tighten or or whatever uh, into that you could <coughs> even darken again done it once do it again. Certain bits of it, certain shapes inside it. Decorating inside what you've already created can also work quite effectively. So I know I haven't done a painting for you, um, but hopefully that, that stuff will have um, given you some things to think about, stuff to play. Uh, that studio <laughs> business, um, much of what I've done today is all in a series on trees on studio. Little lessons, five, ten minutes each explaining exercises, stuff to do with it. Get Because the, there's been a huge amount I've, I've skipped through today. Um, I do think the trees is one of the most fantastically um, interesting and adventurous areas of painting but because you can get away with a great deal you can make the things be dreamy you can make them realistic you can make them pattern orientated you can do all sorts of things with trees but it really starts with can you be bothered to paint the branches <laughs> can you be bothered at the bit I did at the start can you get that bit right or better like that makes a huge difference, like when I show you that kind of steam engine thing held up. That's the first stage. And then it's can you do, think about the variety of marks that you know how to make, and can you think about making them in an order that makes them perhaps a little bit more potentially three-dimensional. Right? The trouble with this sort of thing is it needs to dry out more each time to, um, to make more of it. But what you're after in some ways is thinking about 
So a lot of methods <laughs> just present you with like a flat thing. The tree is like a silhouette, stuff that you paint on it and then maybe another bit of silhouette. What I fascinated me was the idea that it was round in a way, that there was a back to it, there was a middle to it and there was a front to it. And you would, depending on what distance you were looking at it from, you'd either just see it as a silhouette, like if you were looking at, you know, field patterns in the distance, that might be because all you're doing is seeing, seeing a series of sort of lines and, and blobs and smaller getting, you know, you don't need fancy trees methods here really to get this to read. You just need the land to, they need to be simplistically illustrated. But as it gets nearer to you, you know, as soon as you get say here, it might need to be a bit more, just a hint more sophisticated in its shape than it needed to be there. But then when it comes right up to sort of here, it's a completely different animal. Right? It's, it's becoming more three-dimensional, less silhouette flat, and more and more three-dimensionally round. Um, and of course, you know, a lot of people want to paint you know, woodland and um, babbling brooks and, and all that kind of business. So you really need to think about how you're going to paint trunks. So the easiest trees to paint are ones with no tops. Right. Right. You paint the trunk, you paint stuff around it, and you paint fuzzy things that look, but you don't paint the top of the tree, because that's usually where you'll go wrong. Right. So a lot of woodland that works is the path and trees, but you don't see the top of them. Or paths, trees, and you see the top of the distant ones, which are fuzzy. <laughs> and then you work your way up to painting more the whole tree. But that kind of that oak tree sitting in the, sitting in the middle of a field? That's quite hard to get away with. The single tree is harder to do than two or three trees because the two to three trees around each other give you ways out. If it didn't quite work out, then you can blame it on the next tree <laughs> and do a bit more on that one or on the next one. But by themselves, they're quite hard. Yeah. So I would think about it in the round. Tune your line work, that really is the, the, the key to the start bit of it. Think about how you're holding the brush rather than it just be holding it like a pen and painting that way because that's how you always do it. Um, and hopefully some of the things I've shown you today will help you uh, going forward tune, even if it's just one or two little aspects of how you paint trees and other stuff. How, what I've done here could be gardens, you know, it could be all sorts of different things that you're applying that to. Questions? Insults? <laughs> <laughs> Any? No? Could you, could you hold your work up? Oh, this? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I would ignore that bit. See what I mean about the top? Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, really, most of the time, you just want to paint that bit, really. Yeah. Yeah. That, you see, that's a picture, isn't it? You don't need the top at all. Just paint that bit. You'll be all going to co op now, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> could be anybody, could be Asda. Or not. <laughs> if your next project is in fact a big tree in the field, um, where do you start? I would do it wet in wet. I mean, today I've done this in fast one stage after another after another right. the best way to learn how to do this stuff is to not paint it in color to begin with because you're dealing with marks right so you're controlling the marks so all of this stuff I've quite deliberately not made it very colorful because it gets you to see it as marks rather than start questioning how I'm doing it in the color but it also gets you to be able to see if it was me I would go through the process of kind of having a bit of a run through of it tonally right and then, you know, sort of trying to do it in layered marks. And also, I'm rushing here. You might do the first bit, wet in wet, let it dry out, have a think about it, vacuum the house, whatever else you're going to do. And then you come back, and then you think, right, well, I'll do the next stage. And you might do the wet in wet bit twice. And then you might do a wet in wet bit with sort of slight dry brush marks, and let that dry. There, there is no rush on it. It's only because I'm rushing that you probably think it's kind of more that way you have to do. So if you just do it in steady, but the main thing is don't overfill. It's better to look half done and have a bit of movement and space 
than it is to fill it. The more you fill it, the more it looks like, um, well, broccoli. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? Do I do mixed media as well? I have a bad go at everything. I mean, a lot of this stuff is just watercolour. The same thing can apply to ink, because, um, you know, the variation of marks you could make with ink and through to different sorts of pen work could, could be there as well. Um, or, you know, I, I, I was explaining uh, earlier to somebody, I, was, I did a kind of course on this kind of grading marks and actually it was an acrylic painting course it doesn't have I was using the watercolor examples because they were faster to make mm -hmm. but they were coming and going from this long table going actually I need it about halfway don't I and then coming back so that's really a, quite a good you make yourself like a, a marks board and then and then you go actually what do I need because remembering that in your head that's really hard you know remembering the order it's easy if you can see it you know rolled out a bit of paper or whatever and then go, actually, I don't, I'm, doing the, I'm doing them in the wrong order. I'm trying to get these sort of fuzzy marks to do more than they're capable of. Right? It's a bit like an orchestra, you know, or a, or a band. You know, if somebody's got some screeching lead guitar going, you are not going to be heard with a triangle at the back. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> It's, it's that sort of thing. It's which are the loudest? Which are the more attention-seeking? When do you want that? When do you want it quieter? Music, a lot of the time, is quite a good analogy for art. You know, you need quiet bits. You need boring sections. You know, you need boring sections to make the exciting bits seem more exciting. Mm -hmm. You know, and the quiet bits to make the loud bits more exciting. It's the same with this. For example, this is all broken marks here. And it looks okay at the moment because it's all broken marks. If I start to add different sorts of marks onto it, if I start to add um, um, get there eventually. if I start to add these marks onto it, it wouldn't look right. Yeah? So this sort of so one of the other things that people do is you look at that range of mark making and say, so I love this sort of mark making, right? Then you work out which sorts of marks look great together and which sorts of marks, when you start to add them, look out of place. Yeah? It's a bit like somebody doing a screeching guitar solo in the middle of Mendelssohn. Do you know what I mean? It just doesn't... <laughs> it's not going to work. Right? So um, think about which means which are harmonious and then stick to, to those. Because there's some artists, when you look, some, for example, if you looked at Ron Ranson's paintings, right, he's kind of instructional, big hate brush, it's broken marks, it's all obsessionally broken marks, and the odd bit of line work, and the odd bit of stuff, it's not, mass, it's not strong shape pattern based at all, it's fuzziness. Mm -hmm. So if you like fuzzy, that sort of mark making, mixed in with wetty wet, goes a treat. They both sit as happy partners. Sorry? Who was the artist that you just mentioned? Uh, Ron Ranson. He's, he, there's loads of books that Ron Ranson wrote in the past. They're all Ron Ranson is Clockwork Hake, as one of my students put it <laughs> amusingly once. Uh, he uses uh, like a flat, he uses three brushes. It's kind of his stick, do you know what I mean? <laughs> but um, it's very much that impressionistic, yeah. not much to it, broken brush marking, mark making, whatever. They know what goes together, and that's really worth it being aware of. Steal, steal and steal some more from what other people have done in the past. Yeah.